Good morning, Colt Nation. Miss Waddell here. Um, I hope that everybody is having a wonderful end to the September month. Today is September 30th, Wednesday, my birthday. Whoop, whoop. <laughs> um, so um, I want to go ahead and get started with today's lesson. Go ahead and present this screen here. Like I said, I hope you guys are having a great, um, had a great September, wrapping it up, getting ready to start October. Um, hopefully we'll be back in the classroom <clears throat> at the end of next month. And we'll see. Can't wait to see you guys in person. Um, today's lesson, the topic is called Unhelpful Thoughts unhelpful thoughts so think about that for a second i know that we all have unhelpful thoughts that go through our, our heads every single day some of us those unhelpful thoughts are are there all the time and they can tend to get us into some trouble and you know we end up making some bad decisions because of that myself included right before we get started on today's topic i'm going to first recap on everything that we have learned so far so in this unit so far, the very first lesson that we talked about two weeks ago was thoughts, emotions, and decisions. We talked about the amygdala, which is the brain's first response to a strong emotion. We talked about the cortex and how that is then alerted to process decision making. So we talked about those two things and what we learned in that lesson is that whenever we're feeling a strong emotion, regardless of the cause of that emotion whenever we feel that the amygdala part is censored and triggered we instantly feel that emotion and sometimes we don't allow the time to process that emotion and give our cortex section of the brain time to process that so that we can make some good decision making that's what we learned in week one in week two of this unit last week we talked about feel think do and how those, uh, what, how we feel, what we think, and how we act are all connected. We talked about thoughts versus emotions. The difference between those. Thoughts were the things that um, go on in our heads that nobody else can hear. Emotions are feelings. So using those feeling words. Angry, happy, excited, surprised, disappointed. Okay? Our emotions, thoughts, and decisions are all connected. We learned that. The emotion that we're feeling impacts the thoughts that we have, which can impact the decisions that we make. So today, it's going to fit in perfectly um, with what it is that we have been talking about. Sorry, we have Kayla and Prince here. I need you guys quiet. Um, what we're going to talk about today ties in perfectly with the unit that we've been studying and that is on unhelpful thoughts in this lesson we're going to distinguish between helpful and unhelpful thoughts and how they affect our decision so just to kind of warm up i want you guys to think about one possible scenario that could happen at home or at school that would cause a strong emotion I want to give you some time before I, I show you the ones that I had come up with. But something that could happen at home or school that could cause a strong emotion. Whoops. All right. I'll move my thing here. Maybe not. There we go. Um, all right. So some possible scenarios that I came up with was losing a sports game um, or in our family losing a board game some of us don't handle that very well <laughs> another one was arguing with a friend or family member and that can be a small argument maybe something as simple as who gets to decide what tv show you're watching that night um, and the next one was getting in trouble so maybe you your, your mom had lit left you a list of chores that she wanted you to do while she was gone at work and she comes home from work and you didn't do those things and so now you're in trouble 
So those were some examples of some things that could happen at home or school that could cause a strong emotion. Hopefully you were able to come up with one on your own. We're gonna reference the one that you guys came up with towards the end of this lesson. Let's look at a situation together. My apologies. In a basketball game against their rival school, a player on the opposing team runs into Anthony by accident and knocks him to the ground. To his surprise, the referee calls a foul on Anthony and the coach pulls him out of the game. Anthony feels angry. So maybe you guys have played a sport in the past either with the neighborhood um, or for your school, uh, elementary school, middle school, um, a league that's, a, that's around your neighborhood, and something similar to this has happened. It's very easy when you're playing a sport that's competitive that your emotions can get in the way of things. So in this scenario, a player on the opposing team runs into Anthony. He gets knocked to the ground. The referee calls a foul on him. No surprise there. We know that, that referees make mistakes sometimes. Um, the coach pulls Anthony out of the game. Let's talk about some thoughts that could be going through his head. Let's say that Anthony decides to protest the coach's decision by yelling at the referee and his coach. We've seen that before. If we're watching college basketball, NBA. We've seen some, some players get heated and, and yell at the referees. The more he yells, the angrier he's going to feel. What thoughts could lead Anthony to make that decision? What thoughts could be going through Anthony's head to make him yell even more at his at the referee and his coach i want you to think about that what are some possible thoughts that are going through his head right now i'm going to show you mine let's see if these match up so one of the things that i have here this is so unfair this wasn't my fault the ref is dumb those are thoughts these are going through his head right now Nobody can hear those thoughts out loud, but this is how he's using um, what I'm going to refer to as his self-talk. Okay, these are his thoughts in his head. So nobody can hear him, just his thoughts. But these thoughts is causing him to yell, feel even more angrier than what he was. And now, instead of sitting on the bench, he's yelling at the referee and his coach. These are unhelpful thoughts because they made him feel angrier, which makes it more likely for him to make a negative decision. That's important for us to realize. We're going to go through some more scenarios here, but it's important for us to realize that the thoughts that go on in our head really play a factor in the outcome with the decision that we make. What if instead... What if Anthony decided to take a few slow breaths and go to the bench? What thoughts could lead him to make this decision? So he just got knocked down by a player from the other team, but the ref called a foul on him. His coach pulls him out. Now Anthony is deciding to take a few slow breaths and he's going to go to the bench. Look at his face. He's not happy, right? But what are some of the thoughts that could lead him to make this decision? Why is he able to go sit on that bench and not respond in an angry way? Here are some of the possible things that could be going through Anthony's head. My coach will have my back. Coach and I can look at the game tapes later. I need to get my head back into the game. Maybe the thoughts that you came up with were different, but hopefully they were thoughts that were on a more positive uh, mindset. All right, let's look at another one. Here's another scenario. 
Eric has been the fastest runner on the track team for two years in a row. Now his good friend Jamal, who has been conditioning all summer, is quicker than Eric. Eric is feeling jealous. What are some helpful and unhelpful thoughts that Eric could have in this situation? So think about that. Eric's always been the fastest runner on the track team. Now his friend, and it's his good friend, so this isn't just some guy that's on the track team. This is also one of his friends. He's been conditioning all summer long. Now he's quicker than Eric, and Eric is feeling jealous about that. I want us to go to this next slide and look at some, some different uh, thoughts that could be going on in his head. Right here I have a flow chart. I'm going to move this first one out of the way. Maybe. <laughs> there we go. All right, so this flow chart is very similar to what it is that you are going to be asked to do as an assignment at the end of this lesson. We were just given a scenario about the track team and his friend conditioning all summer and, and beating his time. Now he's no longer the fastest. The situation we first have to identify is that Eric is no longer the fastest runner on the track team. Then we have to identify that strong emotion that Eric might be feeling. And I said on here, he's jealous. He's always been the fastest for two whole years. His buddy, and it's a good friend of his, is now beating his time. I want us to first talk about, and like I said, this is just like what your assignment is, so make sure you're paying attention so you'll be able to, to do this on your own. Helpful thoughts. Some helpful thoughts that could be going through Eric's head is he is trained really hard. Maybe he can tell me what techniques he is using. So even though he's feeling jealous, the thoughts that are going to run through his head are on a more positive cycle, right? So he's on that positive track of thinking in a way that is not negative, okay? Okay. He's giving his friend some kudos. He's like, man, he's trained hard. Maybe he can give me some pointers on what he's been doing to condition. A decision that might come from that positive, helpful thinking is that he congratulates Jamal with a handshake. Let's take a look at some of the unhealthy thoughts that could be going through his head. An unhelpful thought, he thinks he's better than me. I'll show him next time. That could be an unhelpful thought, right? As he's thinking those things, a decision that might result from that is that Eric storms off the track without acknowledging any of his team members. So he doesn't tell Jamal goodbye or good job. He doesn't, you know, acknowledge any of his team members. He storms off the track, doesn't talk to anybody. Probably goes to the locker room, packs up his stuff and heads home without ever um, acknowledging anybody, right? So that decision was a result from that hamster wheel of negative, unhelpful thoughts that were going through his head. So it's important that we see here the connections between our thoughts and decisions. Let's keep going. On a scale of zero to five, I want you guys to reflect how much do you helpful thoughts encourage you to make a more positive decision? Just think about it. Since it's a recorded lesson, you can't drop it in the chat or anything like that. We can't have a conversation about it. But I want you to think on what it is that I talked about this morning. How is that helpful? How do helpful thoughts encourage you to make a more positive decision? Zero being not helpful at all. Five being, being very helpful. And then there's somewhere in the middle. So today we learned the difference between helpful and unhelpful thoughts. We then looked at the decisions that result from those thoughts. And the next lesson, we're going to learn how to interrupt unhelpful thoughts before they can lead to poor decisions. I don't know. Um, I hope that you guys don't have any questions because I can't answer them right away. If you do,
come up with any questions about anything that I discussed during this lesson, I really want to hear from you. So if you don't mind, just um, my email is right here at the bottom of the slide, natalie.waddell at jefferson.kyschools.us. Um, again, I'm the behavior specialist for Olmstead. I do work with you guys weekly on Wednesdays and um, kind of pop into some of your all's classes just to help out. If there's anything that I can do to help out, please don't um, hesitate to, to ask me. Before we end this, though, I do want to show you guys the assignment for today, just to kind of go over it in case you guys have questions. So this is what your assignment will look like for today. Make sure you're on the right one that has today's uh, date on there. Make sure it's titled Unhelpful Thoughts. You're going to notice that there's um, a flow chart on here that is similar to the one that was on the um, slides that we just went over. You're going to complete the flow chart below. I want you guys to make sure that you respond to each component. So each box is going to have to have a response in there. You can refer back, rewind me, and watch me all over again um, if you get stuck on how to answer these. But just to kind of get you started, scenario one, Jared and Sam are both in Mr. Crawford's choir class. They are both trying out for the lead part in Olmstead's upcoming open house. Both gentlemen have put in long hours rehearsing. Today in class, Mr. Crawford announced that Sam was selected for the lead part. Sam feels angry. So what you guys are going to do first, you're going to come over here and make a copy. Right, go to file, make a copy over here. Otherwise, everybody's going to see your answers when they come to pull up uh, the main assignment here. So you're going to go down to the situation. Where it says situation, I want you guys to type in what it is that's happening. What happened? And it can be something just, just simple as Sam did not get picked for um, the open house. Okay. I want you then to come down here and you're going to say what the strong emotion is. So in that scenario, an emotion was listed. I want you to find that and put that emotion in here. Then I want you to come down here and you're going to see that there are helpful thoughts and unhelpful thoughts. Over here in this box right here, highlight it right here. Helpful thoughts, you guys are going to think of what are some things that could be going through Sam's head that would be helpful? What would be a helpful thought going through Sam's head? And maybe it can be, well, maybe the other guy practiced harder than I did. You know, or, or I can't wait to try out for the next one. Well, think about some helpful thoughts. Then, what would be a decision, what would be an outcome from that thought? So, Mr. Crawford just announced that Sam um, was selected for the lead part. Actually, that's a typo, so I need to fix that. Um, that Jared was selected for the lead part. Um, Sam feels angry, but he's going to be more conscious about the thoughts that are going through his head. So he's got some helpful thoughts that are going on that hamster wheel. What would be a, a decision outcome based off of those positive thoughts? So think back to the scenarios that we went over in the lesson. Okay, so remember when we talked about the gentleman who uh, was no longer the fastest track runner on the team and some positive thoughts were like, wow, he really worked hard all summer conditioning. I wonder what techniques he can teach me. Those are some positive thoughts. Then a decision from that was he ended up giving Jamal a high five um, and telling him, you know, good job. That was a decision that was made. Versus an unhelpful thought, which was, who does he think he is? He just got lucky, right? Those are unhelpful thoughts. And then he ended up storming off the track field and he left. All right, so that was a decision that was made as a result of that unhelpful thought. So that's what you're going to do. And there's actually another scenario on the other side. Brayden and Ron are in the same science class. The teacher was helping a small group and had her back turned to the table where Brayden and Ron were sitting. 
Ron took Brayden's iPad and dropped it on the floor. Brayden is furious. So you're going to talk about what was the situation? What was the strong emotion being felt? Then I need you to break it down into some helpful thoughts, unhelpful thoughts, and what those decisions could be as a result of that. The very last thing that you have to do is you want, um, I just want you to write two to three sentences about how you can apply what you learned in today's lesson to your everyday life. How can you make that connection to what we talked about to your everyday life? Hopefully you're able to come up um, with several ways that you can do that. I know that we've been talking a lot about our feelings and our thoughts and sometimes that can make us uncomfortable sometimes that can be something that is hard to get us in the practice of doing but the more that we're able to identify how it is that our brain is functioning the thoughts how we're processing our thoughts and our feelings then we can have a better sense of control over things i know that um we're all probably feeling a little anxious having you know the the pandemic that's going on right now and you know, our world is just completely different than it was a year ago as far as places we're able to go and visit and people we can see and things we can do. It's all changing. And so it's hard for us with all of these changes to kind of process it in a way that is healthy. So being able to be mindful of our feelings is extremely helpful to kind of keep us level headed and balanced and and just even right and not in just a state of anxiety and frustration and pain because it's painful to have to feel so negative all the time so hopefully you guys are getting something out of these lessons i know i myself am i shared that in a meeting this morning that i am definitely learning with you guys there are times where i catch myself having unhelpful thoughts or feeling a strong emotion and i have to give myself time to process that and and realize hey like it's not that serious i need to think positively and not go down that rabbit hole of negativity because that's going to make me result in a in a poor decision so even as adults that's something that that we can all all do at any age and now you guys are lucky to learn these tools early on so hopefully it'll have a positive impact with uh yourself, your way of thinking, and the relationships that you're able to form both within your families and outside your family. So I look forward to reading your all's responses and hopefully seeing you guys in person soon. Thanks. Bye guys.